sanctuary is a sacred place. A place of refuge, safety, and protection. A place of relief and comfort. A sanctuary is a place free from slaughter, where wildlife can live and breed in peace. As a young person, I hope that one day I can just go out there, snorkel out and just see all these fish surrounding me. Get myself totally tired of trying to identify all the fish that are there and the types of fish that are there. You don't want to see the sanctuary just for a five year or ten year, but you want to see it for decades, a hundred years, thousand years. You know to say I'm a lucky place now? Yes sir, yes sir. Is everything yes, good? Yes sir. Alright? Yes sir. Yes sir. There's no more fish in here. Yes sir. Okay. Setting it that it's a border, that means that people don't come in and fish, so you have a lot of time that fish can get to breed more. Nobody to harm them or to trouble them that they go away. It's the best thing. This is building towards a lifetime success for the community. In times to come, you can see where a fisherman is going to catch bigger fish so that they can earn their livelihood from it. The fishing is poor, no fish is not coming in. In time to come, if they just low it and give it time, the fisherman will benefit so the children can benefit also. From Black River to Crawford, on the south coast of Jamaica, fishing communities have come together and agreed to the No Fishing Zone, which is the Galleon Special Fishery Conservation Area, established by the Government of Jamaica in 2009 and since 2011 managed by Breds, the Treasure Beach Foundation. Patrol, the fish sanctuary, keep aware intruders from coming and come fish. And what I see with the sanctuary now, I see enough Changes, enough young, young baby fish. So I see a big change in it. I am amazed that the fishermen are so receptive, knowing that the temperament of fishermen are almost like the temperament of the sea. And the majority of them have accepted the whole idea and are cooperating fully. If they come out and they see anybody, they will call back to land and say, I see about such and such place, and we went out and checked it. I want to make sure that each step that we take, the community by our side and they continue to have that pride, that ownership for the sanctuary as if they yeah, this is ours and we're going to protect it. Persons are always looking out for the best interest of the sanctuary and to me that's the best, that's the best thing. It gives you that motivation each day that you come to work, you know that yes, persons want to see this work and it is working. Jamaica was sadly famous for having some of the worst fisheries and reefs in the Caribbean. But what we're now seeing is this amazing resurgence of life in a few of these fish sanctuaries around the island, where communities are leading the charge and succeeding in allowing nature to come back. We tend to see like small circles inside here at, at, at the point of Hajis Bay and Malcolm Bay area, and the um, seagrass bed here feeding. Almost every day currently because we see we seen them yesterday, the day before yesterday. They're in this section mostly from right here, go back up to the end. This area was chosen primarily because of its ecological characteristics, mangrove stands, and then you have seagrass beds interspersed with the little coral heads and so on and so forth, which makes it a prime nursery area for juvenile fish. This sanctuary is really prime location for reproduction of fish, both reef fish, mangrove fish, or fish that prefer seagrass, because these three communities, they contribute to each other. And, uh, and because they contribute to each other, the fish can go between each community and feel protected, feel safe, and they have an ample supply of food. Very strong evidence that the egg production from the fish inside these reserves helps replenish much wider areas of the coastline and even possibly neighboring islands. And one of the really interesting things about that is that the larger fish get inside these reserves, the more eggs they produce. And 
it's a spectacular increase. If you double the length of a fish, its egg production goes up by a factor of nearly 10. Come from Crawford here. Yeah. A fishing in Galleon. A fishing about roughly about 30 odd years now. You see, my father was a fisherman. So you know, your charity come up. Work after my father too, I did love it. I got there, I got there with him sometime. So I get love it. I was born at Laneka, which is a fishing beach. My dad was a fisherman, my uncles are fishing. In my early teens, I used to go out and fish net with some of the fishermen to catch sprat and so, and so. So I love it. I love my job. <laughs> I really love Galleon because I find them very genuine in their excitement, in their pride of the sanctuary. You know, every time we go there, it's such a thrill to see how proud they are to show you, you know, look at this new school of fish that we found. I find the persons in charge of managing the sanctuary who are running it, an everyday operation, the wardens, you know, the directors who dedicate their time, even the persons in administrative office, they're all very dedicated. And I think it pays off. And you can see it when you, when you take the tour in the sanctuary and you see the, the seagrass, which has grown so tall that it's brushing the water top. The last time I went, fish were jumping into the boat and I had to rescue them and toss them back out in the water. You look over and you can see the stingrays, you know, the, the fish, the starfish. Um, it feels very genuine there and it feels like it's a real success. Putting up some railing, a balcony that no one can fall over when they stand on the platform. Yes, I was firing, putting on some mutton. And then after I put on the mutton, I'm going to take a sander and I smooth them off back. We we'll put it right here in the, in the center um, of the sanctuary so you can get off your both sides. With that, the patrol boat beside the platform and then the wardens stay out here and you can spend even longer hours. Someone come across the boundary of the sanctuary, you can actually see that person crossing within the sanctuary and it also helps protect the main area of threat for the sanctuary. Hadjis Bay and Dead Man Hole region, which you tend to see divers coming when it's clear, and also net fishermen trying to get their way in. It's also important for education and outreach. We had over 50 children out here, we gave them a tour of the sanctuary. Sanctuaries were set up based on the presence of juvenile fish. No actual data was collected on whether these fish were actually spawning in the area. So that's the essence of my research, to determine if these fish are spawning in the area by collecting plankton data, where I will sort out for fish eggs and fish larvae. These guys actually go out, help me, they see what I'm doing, they ask me questions, I show them exactly what I'm doing. If I could see a fish, I'll say, hey, that's what a fish egg looks like. I help them understand the science behind the whole fish sanctuary. There's actually data. How will you know that something's working if you don't have data to prove it? Baseline data is necessary to determine what is there now. Ten years from now, we can collect data again and say, did it actually work? In addition to water quality sampling and plankton sampling, we're actually looking at mangrove studies. According to a study that UA did, within the mangrove shows that it's one of the most pristine and one of the most healthy mangrove forests on the island. What I do to hope to do is to follow up on the studies that they did and continue it. Um, even if they, they can't come very often, I'll be here to collect the data and possibly if they drop by, I'll just give them the data to analyze. The connectivity between the mangroves and the seagrass and the reefs all come together and impact the quality of the fish and also having fish in the area in turn impacts the quality of the reef. If the reef improves, it impacts the quality of the seagrass and also the mangroves. So it's important to look at the entire system and not just one thing in isolation. The cliff monitoring was formed through the Sea Fish Initiative, stands for the Community-Based Live Fish Monitoring. 
The cliff data monitoring is being done by wardens, by volunteers, by fishers, by community members who come on board and monitor the fish for their, the amount of fish they catch, the weight of fish they catch. Because sanctuaries don't have the data that we need to say for sure that the sanctuary is working, we wanted to develop a methodology that would not only give us that data, but would also instill a sense of pride in the sanctuaries themselves. Before the sanctuary started out, they used to have this long net that they would call seine net. And they drop it like half miles out at sea and they pull it into shore. When you pull that into shore, you're killing the juvenile, you're killing the eggs, you're killing the corals, you're taking the seaweed to shore. There's so much things that that one net is destroying. And other wildlife, it's not just fish, it's turtles, it's manatee. Stopping seine net fishing and enforcing the no fishing zone has led to observable improvements in the marine environment. We have seen more fishes around right now. And even manatee, more turquoise, and better catch outside the center. Our main threat that, that is posed at, at Malcolm Bay is really the threat of the slaughter and the poaching of the turtles. These are some turtles that some persons come, come on the beach really to slaughter them for shell, they use for make jewelry, and also for the meat, consumption of the meat, and also for the eggs to make um, juice or drinks. Us here at the Gallant Fish Sanctuary, we did public education. We went to the villages near around the, the Gallant Fish Sanctuary to make persons, fishermen, be more aware of it. And also we have taken this a step further by going into schools, just nurturing them really from a younger stage to really make them see the importance of it so that when they are, when they are really grown up, they won't um, venture into these areas. So don't buy the jewelry that are made of um, turtle and don't, don't buy um, a turtle soup nor a turtle drink because if buying this, it just means real that you support the killing of the turtles. Because of the vigilance of the Galleon Sanctuary Wardens, there has been a dramatic decline in turtle slaughter and the poaching of turtle eggs. It's been a great thing to really know as a fisherman and really working as a warder also, you know, to really know that I'm doing something good that is very positive for the younger youth. The environment is really recovering. The communities are fully on board and we need to make sure that we sustain that wonderful recovery that will be both economically and ecologically valuable as a model, not just for Jamaica, but for the Caribbean. So it's really important that donors come on board, partners come on board. We must sustain it, we must protect it, and we've got to nurture the community and the people that are making it happen.